Welcome to Vitality Made Simple, the podcast that empowers you to feel better, look better, and more fully enjoy all of the relationships in your life. You know, it's all about relationships. Now, in my quest to build a community of curiosity, I learned about today's guest from Martha Carlin. You may have heard her interview a few weeks ago, and it's my very great pleasure to introduce to you Morley Robbins. Um, he is the author of Cure Your Fatigue. Now, how many people out there are feeling tired these days? Um, the uh, that's the basis of everything. And you're going to learn also about Morley's uh, root cause protocol. Uh, his book is fascinating. It's called Cure Your Fatigue, C-U-R-E. And uh, he has a little play on words there and lots of plays, plays on words throughout the book. I love that. Um, he's found that you know inflammation and, and oxidative stress uh, is really caused by the imbalance of three very basic minerals in our bodies, and that's magnesium, copper, and iron. So when these are out of balance, our cells can't work efficiently. We have, you know, cellular dysfunction. So we're going to learn a lot about uh, minerals today. I'm, I'm really calling this uh, minerals with Morley uh, because <laughs> he, is, he is the world's expert in my opinion. And we're going to talk about um, lots of research. Uh, he commits two to three hours every single day to digging into peer reviewed research. So he's an expert when it comes to connecting the dots and he has, um, you know, he's just curious. He just wants to find out the truth. He wants to find out what's causing so many people to be fatigued. I mean, many people out there, I know you're thinking I'm sick and tired of be being sick and tired. Well, this is a podcast for you. Um, he's the creator of the root cause protocol, which he may, you know, call the RCP, uh, throughout this podcast. Now it's something you can find lots and lots of free, uh, great information on his podcast. He has a class for, uh, pr for, uh, providers, and I'm actually signed up for his next one. Um, so, Morley, welcome. I want Vitality Made Simple to be a very safe place to be curious, ask questions, uh, all related to body, cell, and spirit. So you're about as curious as they come. Uh, you leave no stone unturned. Tell us well, about your journey. Yeah. Well, thank you for the invite. I'm delighted to be here. Um, this is a, a most unexpected journey. I didn't. I didn't set out, you know, when I was 10 years old, I want to do this when I'm in my 70s. And like, what? <laughs> um, no, I I grew up in a very sickly family, as I think many of us do. And um, my sister became a nurse. And I was supposed to become the doctor. Well, when I found out in college that that was a lot of work. And I just didn't have the stamina for that. Uh, I was really, a, I was a lousy student back then. Um, but something happened in the intervening 50 years. And now, you know, I was just turned 70 last November. And it's like, I'm just this fire eating uh, researcher, or as, or as Martha Carlin calls it, citizen scientist. I love uh -huh. that phrase. Uh -huh. You are. And so it's been a, a real renaissance for me over the last uh, now 15 years. And it's just the, to discover... Um, a lot of the hidden mechanisms for why we have symptoms. And and it was about, probably it was about six years ago, I made a very bold statement on Facebook. And I said, there is no disease. There's only, there's only stress-induced mineral loss that causes metabolic dysfunction. And, you know, I was expect, I was really expecting a full-blown tsunami of response and refutation and nothing not one person commented on it against it mm -hmm. and i realized i was right because no one's ever challenged me on it and so the the merck manual that you all have probably have heard of um, i have the 100th anniversary edition it cost me a fortune to buy it i don't know where they are in the, in the actual sequence of it but i think it was like thirty two thousand conditions that are profiled in the Mark Manual. It's just a story. Mm -hmm. There is there is no disease. It's a very powerful story. It's a very profitable story, but it's a story nonetheless. And so I think it's important for people to really challenge their mindset 
that you were probably given a label. You believe you went to the internet, you let, you researched that label. You said, yeah, that's me. That's exactly what I've got. Well, you have those symptoms, but there's a reason why you have those symptoms. And it turns out that the focal point of all this fatigue and all of this metabolic unrest is we're not converting oxygen into water inside our mitochondria the way we're supposed to. The mitochondria are little water wheels. That's really what they are. And if they're not putting out water, they can't release energy. It's just the way the system's set up. It's absolutely fascinating. And if they don't do that, they become ferrous wheels, but I spell it differently. It's F-E-R-R-O-U-S. And that's where all of the trouble starts. And we've all been on a Ferris wheel and there's seats on the outside. Well, practitioners are taught to treat the seats. And they're spelled dollar sign, E-A-T, dollar sign. That's where all the money is, is out on the seats. And what we focus on in the root cause protocol is the axle. That's where the dysfunction is. And so it's important for people to realize that we're on a planet that has a, a lot of craziness right now, but we're on a planet that has oxygen. 21% of the air we breathe has oxygen in it. It's not our friend. You know, we, we know we can't live without it, right? But we can't age without it either. And it turns out um, we need to turn that oxygen into water. And there's a very important series of enzymes that do that. They're called multi-copper oxidases. So oxidase means it works with oxygen. And it, and it harnesses the power of oxygen to do good. Well, the, the um, enzyme that's inside our mitochondria, and we have 40 quadrillion mitochondria, you know, we, we all remember back in our high school biology class, the picture of the cell, right? Had a nucleus, had a couple of mitochondria, had a bunch of other squiggly things in there. <clears throat> what we didn't know is that that picture was drawn by Walt Disney. <laughs> no, no basis of reality to it. Um, it turns out that the average cell has 500 mitochondria. The, you know, the average liver cell, 2,000 2, mitochondria. Heart cell, 10,000 mitochondria. Mature egg in a woman's body, 600,000 mitochondria. They have brain cells. They're called neurons. There are certain centers that have as many as 2 million mitochondria. Now, here's why that's important. Because every one of those mitochondria are supposed to have 50,000 atoms of copper. And that's the pioneering research of Paul Cobine at Auburn University, who wrote very important articles in 2004 and 2006 to reveal what's really going on inside our mitochondria. Well, again, if, if the mitochondria cannot turn oxygen into water, <clears throat> we can't release the energy uh, molecules so that we get energy and that's why the book is called Cure Your Fatigue. Every condition in the Merck Manual, 100% of the conditions in the Merck Manual, starts with cellular fatigue. And there's a famous um, naturalist and scientist. His name was Victor Schauberger. He was from Germany, um, prominent in the 20s through 50. Well, he lived in, into his into like the mid 70s but um but my wife and i are reading an amazing book called hidden nature and it's all about victor schauberger but he, he has very strong philosophies because he studied nature in the forest he studied streams he studied trees he studied just the whole circulation of of nature and he said the first cause is energy and growth is a byproduct of that. So the, mm. we're, we're geared as, a, as an organism to make energy. That's why we're here. We need to be able to make energy. And what's amazing 
much to my, I was shocked to, to, re, to uh, discover this, much of what we're told to do is designed to lower our energy production. And most people don't know that. And so in the, within the root cause protocol, we have what are called stops and starts. And the reason for the stops and starts is the goal of the protocol is to increase our production of what's called bioavailable copper. Because the more bioavailable copper you have, the more energy you can produce. And there are agents in our environment, in our diet, in our supplement routine that undermine the ability of copper to do that. But just to give the listeners a, a context of why copper is so important, there's only four things that copper does. It creates energy. It clears exhaust. We drive cars and they go forward, but they're spewing out exhaust, right? Well, our mitochondria are the same. They're creating energy, but they're also creating exhaust. And the exact same mineral that creates the energy clears the exhaust. And those are called oxidants. I call them accidents with oxygen. But the oxygen turns into reactive elements that are very destructive. So copper clears those. Copper catalyzes enzymes, particularly the, the oxidase enzymes that involve oxygen. And then the fourth thing that copper does, which was suspiciously quiet over the last several years, but Mother Nature's go-to uh, mechanism to kill all pathogens, bacteria, fungus, virus, and parasites, is copper. It is antimicrobial. And there's a very important um, axiom to understand that any animal that has a parasite is copper deficient. Really? Any animal that's copper deficient will have parasites. And if we learn nothing else from the period 2020 through 2023, we now know that a virus is the excrement of a parasite. Most important thing that we learned over that time period. And so if, if we're reacting to a virus, it's because we're copper deficient. And that's a really important thing to understand. And what's um, critical to this whole discussion is to understand that this process, this dynamic between copper and iron, it's been going, it goes back to the beginning of time, but it really began to change after the First World War. And it changed dramatically after the Second World War. And then it began to change yet again in the 70s and yet again in the 90s. And so over the last century, there have been waves of changes in the uh, farming system, the food processing system, and the pharmaceutical system if you don't think those are owned by the same people, you need to do some more research. But the, the target of those three industries is copper. And the lower our copper in our body, the sicker we become, the more dependent we are on medication. And that's where the big bucks are. So well, it's a very it's a very wild system that's been set up. And uh, hopefully that gives people something to, uh, to reflect on as we continue this dialogue. Hmm. Uh, in your book, you talked about a lot about a protein called cerulea, cerulea-plasm, uh, plasmin. I don't think I'm even pronouncing it correctly, Morley, cerulea-plasmin. Uh, I love that word because it denotes blue, um, just that base word, but it's apparently a protein that binds to copper and allows copper to be bioactive. I mean, one thing you bring out so clearly in your book is that we can have these minerals in our body, but they have to be in the active form. And right. so, so tell us about cerulea, cerulea-plasm, plasmin, uh, yeah. and, and how we can get more of it or how we can at least sustain what we have and, and protect it. No, it's great, great topic to, to discuss. So the, as I understand the best pronunciation or the ideal is cerulea plasmin 
Surreal plasmin. Plasmin. Yeah. And when I did the narration for the book, the, the book is in, in audio as well. It's a physical ebook and, and audio. Um, I, I discovered that that word is in there about a thousand times. <laughs> <laughs> and I started to mispronounce it, and and the the uh, engineer said, "You got to go over and do it again." I said, "Hey, it's my book. I'll do it anyway." He said, "No, <laughs> can't do that." So this this protein, there's no other protein like ceruloplasmin in the body. There's no other mineral that has a protein like ceruloplasmin, and so um, an amino acid or a protein that you all would be familiar with would be say insulin and it's got about 45 amino acids in it. and it, you know how powerful insulin is pretty powerful um peptide ceruloplasmin has 1066 amino acids it, we can't even comprehend how powerful that is but what's more important is that it, it's designed to carry eight copper atoms inside its structure and it can shuttle another 10 to 15 on top of it. So it's, it, what's unique about it is that the, um, the whole premise, the whole operating system for, for Big Pharma is based on one gene, one protein, one function. We've got a gene, it's going to make one protein, and it's going to do one thing. Well, <clears throat> ceruloplasmin gene, there's one gene, it produces ceruloplasmin as a protein, but it can do 20 different things in the body, depending upon what's going on. And it's it's very um, different than any, any other um, biochemical in our body. And it will morph and it will change its function depending upon what the conditions are. Now, when this protein was discovered in 1948 by two Swedish um, physiologists, Holmberg and Laurel, they thought they had discovered the Holy Grail. Only to find out that Big Pharma has been demonizing it ever since. And so it, it's a very disruptive element. And to answer your question, how do we make more of it? Well, that's where the stops and starts come in. We've got to stop taking vitamin D. We've got to stop taking ascorbic acid. Oh, Morley, you're making my brain hurt. I know. You're making my brain hurt. I mean, I know it's in your book and, and listeners, uh, this is super important information and it literally scrambled, you yeah. know, my brain as I'm reading it because there's, there are nuances. And so when you hear that, you're going to be like, ah, no way. But tell us about those nuances, Morley. Well, the, 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 the in the, in the original article from 1948, a uh, homebrew laurel specifically said that ascorbic acid blows up the protein and the and the coppers come out and then then the protein loses its not just its structure it loses its function can't can't do what it's designed to do and the the, the level of confusion around ascorbic acid is legendary and so we have um, whole food vitamin c it's, it's like a car. There's an engine, and there's four wheels, and there's a steering wheel, and there's a cover. And that's the that's the design of the whole food vitamin C. Ascorbic acid is the cover of the car, and no moving parts. And it's like people just they they they're shocked to, to hear that. But the engine of 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 uh, excuse me ascorbic acid or vitamin C is called tyrosinase. It's one of the most important enzymes in our body. It has two copper atoms inside it. And tyrosinase is, is profoundly important in the functioning of our body because there's a lot of tyrosine in our body. And tyrosine needs tyrosinase to make it active. And so, you know, one, one of the most important areas for that is with insulin receptors. Wow, if there's no tyrosinase, well, we're going to get what's called insulin resistance. Ooh, wow, the plot thickens, huh? So <clears throat> the thing is, um, the the ascorbic acid, it's it's not what people think it is. And there is a lot of, of uh, head fakes in the in the world of nutrition and medicine, as you know. 
So <clears throat> then we get to, to vitamin D. It's well, can we go? Can we go yeah. back to ascorbic acid? Um, sure. Because it was it was news to me that that is actually a synthetic form of vitamin C. So right. you advocate, which I so agree with now, whole food whole food vitamin C. So that right. should be a lot of relief to our listeners uh, to be um, very alert to synthetic minerals. I mean, our bodies recognize real food. And uh, like you said, you have to sort of be a sleuth to, to figure out the difference. Well, and most people don't know that if you want to make ascorbic acid, you start with GMO corn and then you mix mm. it with sulfuric acid. And there's one company that, that, that makes 98% of the ascorbic acid on the planet. And it's sold to a hundred different companies. And then they fight with each other as to who has the best ascorbic acid. It's like, it's all made in the same plant. It, it, the, the whole thing is just an absolute um, paragon of insanity. And, and it's like, when you start to, to pick at this, and, and basically, everyone is familiar with the movie, The Wizard of Oz. And the, and the climax is when Toto pulls back the curtain and reveals the snake oil salesman. Well, guess what? I'm Toto. And I'm pulling back the green curtain. And, <clears throat> and I spell the curtain differently. It's C-U hyphen R-T-A-I-N. So you can see the symbol for copper. And I'm telling you, copper runs the body. There's no dispute about that. Here, here's an example. <clears throat> Humans are considered the most evolved species on the planet, right? You know, after 2020, I began to question that, but let's just take it at face value. So we're the most evolved species on the planet. And the copper experts would tell us that we have between nine and 11 copper enzymes. Wow. Wow. It's, that's not a lot. It's better than, than one, right? <clears throat> I came across an article last week, Debbie, that indicated that plants, we've got plants here. Humans are more evolved, right? Plants have 300 copper enzymes. Do you really think that, that humans don't have more than 9 to 11? <laughs> and it's just <clears throat> the, the whole infrastructure of medicine and nutrition and dentistry is based on copper. Who? I've never heard of it. Why, well, why do we? In, why, why do we need it? In fact, Morley, I think there's just so much fear about copper overdose. Um, as I was reading your book, I just went back 25 years to a moment in a parking lot when I ran into another mom whose teenage son was having some signs of schizophrenia. And right. so she had had his hair tested and she said, Debbie, it's all high copper. So that's, that's my first experience, Morley, of, of thinking, oh my gosh, you don't want to have high copper. So, so tell us about what you've learned in terms of, um, the fear of copper overdose and, and related to schizophrenia. Cause I think this is a real common belief. Oh, absolutely is. Um, and, I, and it's a very uh, significant issue for me, just given my, my uh, family history. My dad was schizophrenic. Mm. So I, I don't know whether I talk about it in the book. You mentioned something about 58. But um, when, when I was six years old, 1958, my dad was scheduled to get a, a second electric shock therapy treatment. Oh my gosh. And if you've seen the movie Cuckoo's Nest, you know what that's about. And he said, I'm not doing that. And he literally ran away from home. Never, never to come home again. So yeah. <clears throat> what do you think a six-year-old little boy thought? Well, I yeah. caused my dad to leave, right? right. So I, I, <clears throat> I only carried that wound for 55 years. <clears throat> and what's, what's really funny is it was EFT. I think, I think it's just so funny that... <clears throat> My dad was struggling with EST, and I got cured with EFT, uh, but it, but it released my my fear that I had done something wrong. But the point is, that was in 1958. Imagine my surprise a number of years ago, when I came across research from 1959 
that involved <clears throat> a very noted psychiatrist at Tulane University and two of his colleagues from Harvard. And they, they had 34 patients with schizophrenia. And they were going to treat it <clears throat> with one single medication. One shot of ceruloplasmin. Whoa. And what do you think happened? 30 of 34 were cured. And what people don't know about schizophrenia is it's actually, and there's a lot of fear involved in, in schizophrenia. And, and a lot of uh, be behavioral health issues are based on fear. And <clears throat> when fear gets triggered, it releases hormones, as we know, but it also releases iron. And when the iron interacts with their brain chemicals, especially adrenaline, it gets rusty. It gets oxidized. It becomes what's called adrenochrome. And adrenochrome is the drug of schizophrenia. And so what ceruloplasma does is prevent that iron from interacting with the adrenaline to become adrenochrome. And it's a big deal. And <clears throat> this idea, then, then uh, later I came across a more, that, that was from 59. Then I came across an article, I think it was 2018, where they were talking about this whole issue that you've raised about, oh, the unbound copper, it's, it's such a problem and we've gotta be careful. And, and one of the authors, raises a very important um, point in the, in the midst of the article. He said, I can't help but wonder if the medications that we're giving these patients isn't causing copper to come unbound. And that's what's causing the elevation. Very insightful observation. And I think that is very true. And so here's the, here's the part that people need to understand. And we're talking about a, a mineral that in ideal situations, should be 100 milligrams in our body. <clears throat> that fits on the head of a one-inch stick pin. It's a little tiny bit of, of copper. The average person should have 5,000 milligrams of iron. That's much bigger. It's 50 to 1 ratio. But here's the, the important understanding. According to tra traditional Chinese medicine, Copper is the general, and iron is the foot soldier. And we know there's fewer generals, but they're more powerful. And when the general's not read around, the foot soldiers, they, they get distracted. They play. They do, they do what they're not supposed to do, right? That's a great it's, analogy. That's an excellent yeah. analogy. <clears throat> and all you got to do is picture the Battle of the Bulge without General Patton. Would have been a very different outcome. Mm -hmm. And so... Um, the generals, it's funny, they have more brass, don't they? And what's brass? It's 88. Copper. <laughs> Copper. So, it so, the, so the brass, yeah. the brass runs the body, but we've never been told that. The meme, the meme that is indelibly imprinted in our psyche is you're anemic and you're copper toxic. And the truth is just the opposite. And so, we're discovering in the last few years that everything we've been taught is a bold-faced lie. Everything. And it's a really unsettling uh, concept to come to terms with the fact that, wow, I didn't know that. And wow. And we could just we could go on for a couple of days just talking about the things we've learned. But but the important thing is that we need to challenge the conventional wisdom because it's wrong, because it's not based on bioavailable copper. It's not based on making water to release energy. And the, the um, slogan that I've come up with for the, uh, for the RCP is called ignore the enemies, ignite the energy. And that's really what we need to do. <clears throat> and that goes right back to Victor Schauberger. I didn't know about Schauberger when I came up with that phrase, but our first priority is to make energy. And the only way we can do that is to get the excess iron that's in our tissue out of the way and focus on the copper. 
But let me explain this 100 milligrams of copper. 47% of our copper is in our bone marrow. And the bone marrow is found in our hips, pelvis, and long bones, our thigh bones. So almost half of the copper in our body <clears throat> is in tissue that never gets measured. Can't measure it in a blood test, can't measure it in a hair test. Now the 27% is measured in the muscles. It's found in the muscles. So that's a lot of, that's, you know, that's 74% of our copper is bound up in uh, tissue that, you know, you know, can't be measured. And so then another 25% is found in our organs, our liver, pancreas, brain, heart, kidneys, spleen. These are very copper-rich organs, as all organs are, and we can't measure those in a blood test. And then there's 1% of copper is found in the blood. And I would argue a very small percentage would be found in the, in the hair follicle. And so they've been, for, for decades, they've been making sweeping assertions about a 1% sample that is heavily influenced by iron status in the body. And if iron gets too high, it too will blow up the ceruloplasm protein. It denatures it. And who knew, right? We didn't, we didn't even know about ceruloplasma. We've never told that, that, that this is what really runs the body. And it's considered the master antioxidant protein on the planet. Ascorbic acid is not an antioxidant. It's actually pro-oxidant. Vitamin E, very powerful antioxidant. But there's a whole series of antioxidant enzymes, not proteins, enzymes, that are based on copper, copper metabolism. And they're called, well, ceruloplasm's at the top, but there's superoxide dismutase, there's catalase, glutathione peroxidase, paraoxinase, and there's a whole series of, of other enzymes that are designed to neutralize the reactive uh, nature of the oxygen molecule. Nobody talks about that. And it's, it's a complete mystery to, to doctors and dentists and other practitioners because they've, they've just never been trained. And we can't, we can't fault the practitioners for their lack of training. What we can do is fault them for their lack of curiosity. And the, there, there aren't enough people asking the question why. And so I was recently talking to a very high profile functional medicine doctor. Well, I won't identify him by name. And he said, you know, Morley, I really appreciate your work. You agree with many of the things you say, but I don't agree with you about vitamin D. I said, that's fine. I, you know, I respect your, your opinion. I said, so you're, you're doing a lot of work measuring the, the storage level of D. He said, yeah. I said, what have you noticed when you look at the active level? He said, what? I said, well, you know, there's, there's two forms. There's storage and active. He said, what are you talking about? And suddenly he was in free fall. And I said, have you ever asked the question, why is your patient's vitamin D level low? He said, no, I, I, ne I never, never thought to ask that. I said, would you like to know why it's low? He said, I can't wait to find out. So it, <clears throat> we live in a world where if animals are denied copper in their diet, and that's a the, the um, nutrient deficiency on the farm for 80 years has been copper. It's a big deal, folks. Um, but if, you're, if you have a copper deficient diet, iron accumulates in the liver. When did we first know that? Two separate studies in 1928, uh, heart Steinbach, Waddell, and LVM uh, in March of 1928. And then several months later, uh, James Spencer McHarg and his colleagues at uh, University of Kentucky did a, rep, you know, a repeat study, found the exact same 
uh, information. And so if we are copper deficient, we'll be iron toxic. But here's the catch. It doesn't show up in a blood test because it's in the liver, not in the blood. And that's where the real problems are. And so this notion that um, humans are anemic, again, we're the most evolved species, right? And, and what is iron? It's the most prevalent element on planet Earth. So let's think about this. The most evolved species has lost the ability to metabolize the number one element on the planet. It doesn't pass the sniff test. So, Sorry. so morally, so therefore, like as far as actionable steps, what should, what do you recommend um, that people do? What test should they get to know uh, about iron overload, about copper, copper deficiency, which vitamin D test is the exact thing right. to ask for? It sounds like to me, we, maybe we're measuring, you know, incorrectly. Um, what do you recommend? Well, there's a, a panel, there's a um, order entry um, programs called Request to Test and Ulta Wellness. Um, there, there are maybe three or four, but those are the two prominent ones, Request to Test and Ulta Wellness. And I developed what's called the Full Monty Iron Panel. And it's got 12 different markers. And it gets into the weeds of what, what we're talking about, lets people know what what's going on with their copper and their ceruloplasmin and their iron. There's many different ways to measure iron in a blood test. Uh, and we look at vitamin A and D. And the part that people don't know that's really important uh, is that if you're focusing on D, you're blocking your vitamin A uptake because the, the, um, the uptake mechanism is binary. It can do one or the other, but it can't do both. And so if you're, uh, preoccupied with D, then you're going to have a problem getting retinol. And why is retinol important? Well, there's a thousand reasons why it's important. But the most important is there are two pumps in our body. They're called copper pumps. And they load up uh, copper into these enzymes. And there's one called 7B, and that just makes ceruloplasmin. And 7A makes all the rest whether it's nine or 300 or probably 500, who knows what the number is, but it's a very busy pump. And retinoic acid, which is a derivative of retinol, is what activates those pumps. So if you don't have retinol in your diet, as most people don't, because they've been told they're going to get vitamin A toxic, which is an absolute lie, um, the retinol is essential to make retinoic acid to vitalize, keep it simple, right? Simple vitality, right? Yeah, keep it simple. So keep it simple. Simple vitality is you got to have retinol to activate the pumps to get the copper in to run the body. And we've been trained like circus bears to think that our bodies are broken and that, that we need doctors to fix them. No, you don't. What the root cause protocol does is it teaches you the minerals and vitamins to stay away from. Those are the stops. Teaches you the ones to start. <clears throat> Debbie, I get I get emails and calls from people all over the world thanking me for saving their life. I don't even know who these people are, but they've come across a podcast, they've gotten the book, they've listened to the download. And all they've done is simple nutrition. And, and as I describe it in the program, we don't diagnose anything. And we don't treat anything, but we do dispense common sense. And that's about as simple as it gets. And so well, people have been trained to think it's complicated, and it's not. It's really very simple. That's why the name of your podcast is so valuable. Well, thank you. Uh, I think that um, it is so essential for people to know that they have to be the boss of their health span, of their vitality span. Uh, you know, doctors certainly have their place. But we have to um, we have to use the brain God gave us to to learn what 
uh, we need to know how our bodies are designed, what works for us. And I think in our world, a key point, Morley, that you bring out in your book is that, you know, we have this chronic stress. And of course, recently, chronic stress has become so normalized. I mean, um, so I know you've investigated the, um, the impact of stress on these, uh, these essential nutrients. We haven't touched much on magnesium yet, Mm -hmm. but, uh, but I'd like for you to expound on what stress does to dysregulate uh, these minerals. Yeah. Very, very important point. So when we're under acute stress, the body's designed to lose magnesium to respond to it. It's it's the price we pay for for acute stress. You know, we fall down, we have an argument, you know, we have some deadline, <clears throat> and that's it, I call it the magnesium burn rate. Love as, that. Love as that. Your stress level goes up, your magnesium burn rate is going to go up. But there's another um, more significant mechanism that's involved and that's chronic stress and stress comes in a thousand different forms you know if we start ticking off all the different forms of stress that we know about we could easily occupy three or four hours of, of dialogue but the but this the stress that's the most significant on planet earth is oxidative stress oxygen is it's a very powerful element that needs to be neutralized. And there's only, and then we've got, and that's the second most reactive element on the planet after fluorine gas. We won't get into that, but fluorine gas and oxygen are one, two in terms of the reactivity. And then the master pro-oxidant on the planet, the number one element is iron. And what does iron like to do with oxygen? Create rust. It's really, really powerful. And there's only one element on this planet that can neutralize both of them at the exact same time and keep them from causing rust, and that's copper. And so the the mechanism of magnesium burn rate that very few people talk about is, again, a low copper body producing a lot of iron, storing a lot of iron, which creates a lot of oxidative stress, which causes the magnesium loss. And back to this physician real quickly, I explained to him that under that situation, there isn't enough magnesium in the liver because of the buildup of iron in the liver. There's a magnesium loss. And the enzyme to turn cholesterol into vitamin D, it's called 25-hydroxylase enzyme. It requires magnesium. And the, and the expression will be low in a really stressed out body, especially a body that is chronically stressed with, with too much oxygen, too much iron. And that's really what the RCP is designed to do, is lower that iron stress so that the copper can begin, the general can begin to assert itself and begin to regulate the body the way it's designed to do. Well, and I would suspect that that lowers pH too, um, oh, just absolutely. thinking about all of that. Uh, so what, what are your favorite copper rich foods to replenish this? Um, bee pollen is a very, you, you cannot make bee pollen without copper. Yeah. yeah the little bees can't do it. So they've got it. So it's got copper in it. It's got B vitamins. It's got a lot of nutrients, but copper is, a, is very special there. Um, whole food vitamin C has a lot of tyrosinase in it, which means it's got a lot of copper in it. Um, grass-fed beef liver is Ooh, a very... Are you serious? Yeah. Beef I am, liver. Right? I mean, oh, yeah. I sat at the table for a long time, you know, as a little girl, till I would finally eat my liver. Um, yeah. But, you know, that's just, that's not something a lot of people do these days. I, I, oh. I read about it all the time, Morley. I guess we could get that through um, desiccated... Well, pills, I mean, you know, you want to minimize pills, of course, but I've I've got to figure a better way to make beef liver um, more tasty. I have a, I have a sheet of paper with 13 names on it. I've done over 7,500 consults, but I have 13 people who got excited when I said (laughs) beef liver. And so most people to test it, you're absolutely right. And 
that's in part why I designed one. And it's, and it's called Recuperate. And I didn't know that, folks. Uh, so that, yeah. that's good to hear. Yeah, that was that's actually my revenge for the period 20 through 2020 through 2022. That's my, my uh, stimulus to try to bring people back. And so they can get that at uh, Formula IQ supplements. And it's just a great resource for people to get their supplements. And uh, that one, Recuperate has beef liver, it has spirulina, and it has turmeric. And it has a form of copper called copper bisglycinate, which is very bioavailable. And it's a game changer. And people who have fatigue are right up once they get access to that supplement. That, that's fantastic. I'll put that link in the show notes uh, for all the listeners. Uh, can we touch on glyphosate? Um, I, I know that that has to be a huge piece of all of this. Right. And um, our listeners are absolutely uh, interested in glyphosate, Morley. So tell us what, you, what you've learned so far about how, how that's going to impact these very uh, delicate mineral balances. Absolutely. Um, I know you're going to have uh, Stephanie Seneff on your program. Yes. She, yeah. Yes. Listeners, Stephanie Seneff is going to be here in about um, probably about four or five weeks. So yeah. she's um, one of our heroes, Morley Wright. Uh, oh, sure. Absolutely. She's Nobody knows more about glyphosate than, than uh, Dr. Seneff. But um, we were at a conference back in 2018. So it was almost five years ago now. And we were at a, a breakfast round table and she leaned forward. She said, Morley, would you like to know why glyphosate is so hard on copper metabolism? <laughs> I thought I died and gone to heaven. You said, said, tell me more, tell me more. Said, tell me more. She said, um, um, glyphosate can chelate copper down to a pH of one. There we are at pH again. Yeah. Woo. pH of one. I mean, what that, what does that mean? It means that nothing stops it. Yeah. It chelates other minerals, which I'm going to get to in a minute, but it has a preferential focus on copper. And there are, in that ceruloplasmin protein, there are 16 conserved glycine amino acid residues. And I asked her, I said, what does that word conserved mean? <laughs> and she leans forward and says, it means they're really important. Because they've been conserved through evolution over many, many years. And so what is glyphosate? It's glycine with a nitrogen wart. And so the body gets confused when it sees glyphosate, glycine. Oh, I'll just take whatever looks, whatever's closest. And so it's, it's creating a lot of confusion in our body. But let me come back to the, the chelation properties for just a minute. We all know what a logarithmic scale is. We measure pH with a logarithmic scale. We know that a pH of one is very different than a seven. We measure uh, earthquakes in a logarithmic scale, that a pH of three, or excuse me, a, a, an earthquake at three is very different than an earthquake at seven. Glyphosate mineral chelating ability is measured in a logarithmic scale. It chelates magnesium at a two. It chelates zinc at a six. It chelates copper at an 11. So what does that mean? It means that it's chelating copper a billion times faster than it chelates magnesium and 100,000 times faster than it chelates zinc. So it is a heat-seeking missile for copper. And what... Dr. Seneff has done masterfully um, with her colleagues is begin to reveal all the different conditions that are being um, blown up by glyphosate. Now, she may not talk about copper the way I do, but I can assure you that the heart of the mechanism that's causing these conditions, like gout or non non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, or cardiovascular disease, you name the condition, I can assure you that it's copper metabolism that's being blown up. And so people need to know that uh, they don't just need to be careful with their diet. They need to be pristine organic with their diet. Because the glyphosate residue is showing up even in the most rigorous eaters. 
And so it's everywhere now, unfortunately. And so we need to um, be very aggressive with the minerals that we do take, which is what the focus of the RCP is. And we, we just need to know that there are forces working against us that we're, we're not aware of. They're silent forces. And, and the, uh, the farming industry um, is, um, you know, it, it's designed to grow food, but they're not worried about health span. They're certainly not worried about lifespan. Um, and we've, we just have to be very aware of the price we pay with the foods that we're eating. And it's a, it's a constant source of stress. And again, we're back to that stress issue. It's, it's, what's important for people to know that when you're under chronic stress, so acute stress is affecting magnesium, chronic stress, completely different. Mm -hmm. Because chronic stress implies a level of fear. Right. And I, I spell fear a little differently. It's F-E hyphen A-R. And, and why do I spell it that way? So you see the symbol for iron, but you'll remember that iron activates rust. F-E hyphen A-R. And when we're in a state of fear, two principal hormones get released, adrenaline and cortisol. Adrenaline is, um, is forcing oxygen into the body. It affects iron status. <clears throat> but cortisol is playing in the background and cortisol increases a very important protein called metallothionine. Mm -hmm. Well, there's a four to five-fold increase. That's a huge increase in metallothionine. But what does metallothionine do? It binds up copper a thousand times stronger than it binds up zinc. The other thing that cortisol does is that there's a, a little doorway in the front of the cell that allows copper in. It's called CTR1, copper transporter one. Turns out that copper, excuse me, that cortisol blocks the copper uptake at CTR1. So we have two separate mechanisms that are causing a loss of copper. So basically what's happening in chronic um, stress, chronic fear, fear. Mm -hmm. the, the organism is basically saying, I'm taking you offline. You can't seem to handle the stress that you're under. And it's not being sinister. It's just recognizing that you're in a constant state of alarm. You're in sympathetic overdrive. You're not able to produce energy and you begin to auger down. And that's really where we've been for the last several years. Absolutely. I think that's why uh, the Bible is so clear about do not fear our bodies are not designed for that chronic fear. If we're running from, you know, some real terror or perceived stressor, um, then, you know, everything shuts down. And to hear you describe that on such a molecular cellular level is so interesting because, you know, fear can almost be addictive for some people. And oh, it is. I, yeah, I think in your book, if I remember correctly, Morley, uh, you talked about in your protocol, you teach your practitioners to make a timeline of where people had maybe an acute trauma, an acute stressor that really like shut down the cellular mechanisms that allowed energy production. Uh, the, the vast majority of the people I work with, they can tell me the day and the hour when it happened. And they've just been working on a flat tire ever since. And they, mm -hmm. they, and see, the, the important thing is that people need to understand, yeah, there is no disease, but there is stress, and there's mineral loss, and then there's symptoms, but there is no disease. And so well, once you understand where the stress started, and you understand what the minerals are doing, then you begin to recognize where the origin of the symptoms came from. Yeah, that's, I mean, disease in its in terms of just breaking that word apart, you know, dis-ease. So we want to get back to ease. We want to live right. more by design. Uh, exactly. in, and in your book, you have these stops and starts. I would, those are also on your website. Is that correct? Absolutely. Uh, so yeah. there, you you know, so listeners, mm -hmm. you can go to Morley's website, uh, root, root Cause Protocol, and you can find a list. Now, you know, you all know my um mindset. It's like, start somewhere, start where you can. 
uh, build resilience in, in some area. Don't feel overwhelmed, but check out Morley's website. You're just going to find a lot, a lot there. And, um, you know, as Morley, as I said, at the beginning of this, uh, conversation, you're such an incredible uh, brain that it kind of scrambles my brain uh, trying to understand this. So I would encourage all the listeners to just dive a little deeper, uh, you know, open your mind, uh, be curious, stay curious, because this is really impactful information. And, and it's not as difficult as it seems to right. improve your copper uh, bio availability to uh, decrease your iron and to have more energy, to have more resilience, to improve your immune system. Uh, all these areas can be measured in terms of, of how, how well you're sleeping, how, um, how good you feel during the day, how well you react to stressors in an appropriate manner. Uh, it's just great, great information, Morley. I, I appreciate it so much. How can people learn more, connect with you? You do have the magnesium advocacy group, which is incredibly, um, intriguing to me. You know, uh, my listeners know I'm not, I'm not big on Facebook, but that is a Facebook group I'm go going to join. Cause I want to learn more about, uh, magnesium. I think it's such a huge part of, of our design. Uh, so Morley, you know, take it away. Tell us how people can find you. Yeah. The, the Facebook group started about 14 years ago. Uh, maybe it was, 13 years ago, but um, <clears throat> when it started, there were three people. Now there's over 250,000 people. Um, we had about a thousand people a month, which is just, it's a mind blowing experience. There's a website. Uh, the easiest way to get to it is rcp123.org. And uh, that stands for the root cause protocol. And you'll get into the resources page, and there's, I've got 81 posts on iron toxicity that are riddled with science. Again, all I've done, as as Debbie was pointing out, last 14 years, I've been reading articles for two to three hours a day, and just connecting dots. That's what I was really good at in my prior uh, work. I was a um, hospital executive focusing on uh, planning and marketing. I was really good at connecting dots. Where's the where's the puck going to be? And I just, I had this awakening that that there need, needs to be more to the, must be more to the story. And so I've just taken that skill set of connecting dots and applied it to the research. And the, the tragedy is these scientists don't talk to each other. Well, all I've done is started to, create all these different alignments of ideas and it's it's absolutely amazing and basically what i've done is i've dusted off mother nature mother nature had this all figured out a long time ago and it's an elegant uh, system our immune system is amazing and it responds on energy and intelligence turns out copper provides both we didn't hear much of that in the last couple of years and um i think it's important for people to realize that um, we do have an innate intelligence. We, we, we really have been endowed with wisdom, but it needs to be fed the right nutrients. And that's really what the root cause protocol does. So for people who want to dig deeper, uh, we have an online community, RCP community. Um, we have a course that, that Debbie mentioned, it's called the RCP Institute. And uh, it's a 16 week program that meets twice a year. And it's just a lot of fun to see people come in. It's usually a couple hundred people in each class. I just get this download of truth. And, and one of the cornerstones of this whole program is missing information equals missing truth. Well, if you don't know how energy is made, if you don't know how um, exhaust is cleared, if you don't know how enzymes are catalyzed, if you don't know how enemies are eliminated, then you, you don't really understand human physiology. And that's all we're trying to do is get down to a very simple understanding of what runs our body and what regulates our body. And, and for those um, ambitious few, um, my email address is my first and last name at Gmail. And for those really inspired, uh, my phone number is 847 
922-8061. Um, the, the host of these programs always wins when I give out my phone number, but, but I know that the people who really need to speak with me are very careful about um, contacting me. So I, I look forward to the conversation. Your heart and your commitment uh, are unparalleled, Morley. I I can't thank you enough for joining us today uh, for Vitality Made Simple. We're we're now in over, over we're in eighty one countries and I don't know how many how many cities, That's but right. this is information the whole world needs. So so mm -hmm. thank you, thank you for taking time. Um, I I'll, I'll post these things in the show notes and. My goodness, you can you can call Morley and tell him thanks. Uh, but one thing, you know, one thing you might think about, Debbie, is this is going to invite a lot of questions on the part of your listeners. So there may be a, a conversation we have about the questions. I've there may be. Thank you, thank you for that, Morley, because there's so much I don't understand. There's That's still awesome. so much cognitive dissonance that I have. I have some, you know. Cognitive bias, probably, yeah, sure. uh, in just what I've been taught. But I'm curious, and I appreciate curious people like you. That's that's what we want. We want a culture of curiosity. True science is the ability to ask questions. It's the ability to to say, "I don't get this. How does this work? Is this really the truth? Is this really, you know, the world? You know, the world was flat, you know, not that long ago. You know, what I'm saying that's as right. far as well, what people believed, and so." So we have to ask questions and we, in each person listening, you are the boss of you. Your, your vitality span is very much in your control. And it doesn't mean that you have to do everything perfectly right. No. Our bodies are designed to heal. So uh, when we, you know, sort of give them the right ingredients, I love your, your vehicle analogy, Morley, all through my podcast, I talk about these bodies are merely our relationship vehicles and right. they're not going to last forever, but we, with a nice vehicle, you want to take care of it. And you want to give it what it was, um, the fuel it, it was designed to use. You want to put the right amount of air in the tires and you want to watch the check engine light. Well, fatigue is sure, certainly a big check engine light. And uh, when that check engine light comes on, you know, you can put duct tape over it or you can try to figure out what in the heck is going on. And that's what you've done, Morley. You've you've done deep into the engine, into the fuel and, and just Absolutely. thank you so much. You all check out. Um, Morley's website, um, you know, obviously you can ask him questions. I probably am not a good source for that because I'm still learning, but I'll be taking his, um, root cause protocol starting in July. I, I want to learn as much as I can and pass as much good information along to you. Uh, once again, please share this podcast. I am very much a social media introvert. And uh, I'd rather, I'd rather be reading <laughs> studies or reading books, um, but share it with people that it can help and keep listening, keep subscribing. And I just wish you uh, blessings until next time. Thanks for listening.